you know, even even given their current, uh, you know, the riding high. So, given all that, where do we stand in this long, longer term kind of trend or debate in Japan about whether politics can sort of fundamentally transform and the system could reshape itself into one where we have regularly competitive elections uh, and more than one strong political party. Is that done uh, or, or not? Well, I think um, the, key, the, 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 the heart of the problem here is that in the early 1990s, people who advocated electoral reform argued that a normal country looks like Britain or the United States with a two-party system. And so they wanted to adopt the single, you know, the first past the post single member district system that our, that our two countries have. And then it got, you know, they got a little bit of this PR district put in uh, to, to bring along the socialists and, and the Cometo. I think the key problem is this country is, does not have the kind of social structure that is, uh, is uh, compatible with a two party system. Um, you know, in, 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 our, in the U.S., for example, each, the Democratic Party, has, is built on one particular social coalition and the Republican Party on a different social coalition. And then there are swing voters and the disaffected voters, and so you have real competition. But that isn't the case in Japan, where you don't have these deep close social cleavages. So, you know, the DPJ comes in and they say, we're going to do things very different. But they're there a little bit at a time, and they end up doing it very much like the LDP. They self-destructed. It's inevitable that two-party system will not, I think, cannot work in Japan. They'll never, it'll never be a stable, you know, kind of system that people imagine when they think of tra of of trans uh, uh, planting British or American political culture onto Japanese political culture. There's not, a, there's no base here for that. So. I think, I mean, unfortunately, I don't believe Abe is really serious about fundamental electoral system reform, because if he were, they would figure out how to either go back to the, to the you know, the, the system they used to have, the Chusenkyo Kseido, um, you know, the single non-transferable vote, vote system, or something that permits for a moderate multi-party system where people can choose among shades of gray, not just black and white. Because there is, people don't make black and white decisions about politics in this country. So I think that's the heart of the problem. I don't see any solution as long as the electoral system remains unchanged. I don't think the electoral system is going to be changed, even though if you talk to, to politicians in any party, including the LDP, the majority will say, "Jesus, we made a big mistake in, in getting rid of the old system. I wish we could go back. But remember, all these people have been elected under this system. They're very risk averse. You don't want to change a system that might cost you your seat. So the inertia is you is very big. There's not going to be electoral system change most likely. And so I think we're in for a long period of this kind of, um, of political party illness or sickness, as I put it before. Well, Go ahead. I, mean, I think I'd recite on. Do, do you agree that, um, as Gerald said, this country doesn't have a social structure compatible with a two-party system? Um, no. Um, well, I mean, I agree. I agree in the sense that, um, you know, the kind of class-based voting or the kind of, you know, ethnicity-based voting that you typically see, you know, in the U.S. or in the U.K. contest is, you know, context is lacking in the Japanese case. And this is also, I think, you know, the, the difficulty is aggravated by the fact that you know, the, 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 the system that used to exist before the transition to this would-be two-party system, the perpetual one-party rule by the LDP, in which the LDP became the super catch-all party, you know, lacking thoroughly in principle when it comes to staying in power. I mean, you know, to, to become an opposition party, you know, in a principal way against that is mm. impossible. Right, so this is why you know the DPJ was reformist, but it was also redistributive. You know, it was doing all that, and inconsistency is overlooked by the Japanese voters as far as the LDP is concerned. But the DPJ is getting punished for not being consistent right. and having lied, and so you know it's never going to work. Uh, so I think there's you know there is that fundamental difficulty. You know, we don't begin a new political system or electoral system from scratch. We have to live, you know, deal with what existed beforehand, and that sort of, I think, you know, dooming any attempt in Japan to, uh, to, to come up with a clear cut, 
you know, uh, two-party system alternating in government. So I'll just add one more word uh, to that. But the, the potential for volatility in parties in, in, in elections is very great. Right now, Abe is going riding high. The LDP is strong. But that's all based on the, assumption, on the expectation that his economic policy will succeed. If it doesn't, well, of course, there'll be a huge, a huge uh, a shift again in, vo in voting in voter preferences. So you see, then you might you would probably see another party come to power, but it won't last. Uh, this is not a stable system. Uh, it's stable right now, but it's that stability based on an assumption of success. The system is not stable. Uh, it's potentially very very volatile. Um, and I think a lot, as we've been saying, a lot has to do with the electoral system itself. Hi there, uh, Aaron Sheldrick, Reuters. There's another two words that um, don't, got, don't fail to get mentioned in this forum very often, and that's uh, nuclear policy. Um, I was wondering if you could explain the disconnect there. Uh, the LDP is the only one that supports nuclear policy, uh, sorry, that supports maintaining nuclear power uh, over the long term, according to the uh, Yomiuri. Um, and it doesn't seem to be going to become an issue in this election. It wasn't in the last one. What, what's, with the majority of the population opposing nuclear power, what's, what's the disconnect there? Can you help me with that? Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the problem, of course, you know, that sort of um, the gap between the popular will as expressed in various, you know, surveys and, you know, polls and, and um, public comments and whatnot, and uh, the LDP coming back to power and seeming, you know, presumably keeping power or strengthening its position in power. Um, well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, um, you know, the nuclear power uh, well, I mean, the LDP has been rather good at it too. I mean, it's been sort of lying its way into back to power in the last December election, and now it's sort of becoming less shy about its true intentions of restarting the nuclear reactors. Uh, but uh, I mean, you know, there is a reason why this system has worked for so long in Japan. You know, the the power company lobbying power is tremendous. And uh, the media, of course, is saturated with people who are only willing to help uh, with that. So uh, they, they, they go back to the old tricks, and that's one big part. And um, of course, the opposition parties are divided, and so splitting the votes and unable to present you know, a, a, a effective alternative to, to, to the, um, or the choice to those people who don't want to vote for the LDP because they are opposed to nuclear power generation. Um, so. I guess, um, yeah, we'll see more of a um, bolder move in that direction of restarting the nuclear power reactors once the power selection is over. Um, and um, again, I mean, this really has to do with a great disconnect between, you know, the, um, the political elites on the one hand and the popular uh, view. So I guess, the, you know, it's a question, how, it's a question of intensity. Public is, is, is opposed uh, majority of the public is opposed to restarting these nuclear power plants. How intense is the opposition? Well, obviously, it's not intense enough that that issue overrides every other issue in the public's mind when it comes to deciding where, who to vote for. And clearly, the, there's a, you know, a lot of opposition, but the, the most important issue, where the, the intensity is most, is most extreme on the question of economic uh, growth. And so as long as there's expectations that the LDP will pull that off, um, that's, it'll keep on getting supported. But I think the chances of more than, I don't know, maybe a couple of uh, nuclear power plants being restarted in the, within the next year, uh, of there being more than that, virtually non-existent. The reality is that Japan had 54 nuclear power plants before Fukushima, and now has one or two in operation, if it has four or five a year from now, that will be, a, that itself is hard, I, I think is hard to imagine. The, op, the public's opposition will find ways of being expressed. Uh, even though the LDP is going into the election, the only party advocate, you know, that's opposed to the so-called zero option and the rest of it, um, there'll be ways to, uh, to hold back 
uh, that um, uh, restarting of, of, of the power plants. And one thing the DPJ did accomplish was to set up a nuclear regulatory agency that is independent of, uh, of, 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 of MIDI. And so they're much, they're much more hard-nosed about not permitting the, re, the restarting of nuclear power plants that are on active fault lines and, and the rest of it. So I think Japan has a huge energy problem ahead of it, which, uh, by the way, is one reason to really keep your eye on this negotiation between Tokyo and Moscow about the Northern Islands. Of the, of the three territorial issues that Japan has, that's the only one that has any chance of being resolved, and it will be resolved for two reasons. One is energy, and the other is kind of this geopolitical balance against China. But you know, the fact that they're going to have a negotiation at the vice minister level, I think, in this, in this coming month, is very big. It's a really interesting, very important issue. Putin seems interested in trying to get this uh, issue resolved. And, and you know, it's the Nixon goes to China phenomenon. Only Abe could pull this off. He could make a compromise on the Northern Ireland issue that someone on that was more, you know, the, the DPJ, a DPJ leader could not possibly do. They're going to get, they can get two islands back without, you know, that's been the, on the books, you know, that's been out there since 1956. They can get the two small islands back. So the question is how, what to do about, it's the two plus alpha, uh, you know, what's the alpha, what's in the formula to come to an agreement? Not impossible. Did I um, hear another prediction there that the <laughs> Northern Islands dispute will be settled? I won't go that far, but I think there's a chance it will be settled. Thanks. Over there. Siegfried Knedel, freelancer from Germany. Uh, Mr. Nakano, you talked about the uh, necessary uh, the changing this political system from scratch. So would it not one step in this direction to change the, the, the system of the parties? Parties now can only be founded by five members of parliament. But six members of the parliament have every time the same thinking of this political system. To found a, a really a, a new kind of parties it would be, perhaps it would be necessary to have a, a mass movement, a grassroots uh, movement. But the Green Party is founded now, but it's, 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 I have no opportunity to, to get in the parliament because uh, it's very expensive for them. Um, they, uh, they have now, uh, they have need, I think, 2% or t 2 million votes. And uh, so it's, for them, it's, it's not possible to, to, to get a successful a party. To change this uh, would be would it not necessary to change this system to make it easier for uh, a, a grassroots movement to found a party? No, I quite agree, and um, I think there are reasons why the um, it's particularly difficult for new entrants to join the you know the, the political race in Japan. It's not uh, you know it's it's deliberate, of course. You know the, the severe restrictions on campaigning also. But you know the the exorbitant de deposits required for candidacy uh, and all that. Of course, you know that's part of the package of this sort of state, you know, controlled society. That you know the, the process of modernization of Japan uh, continues to be there. And I think um, part of the reason why the DPG also failed in government was, of course, it had to adapt to a system that has adapted itself over the LDP over the years. And so having to operate from day one in a system that is friendly for the LDP but not for the other parties or those who want to change, of course, is tremendously difficult. So, uh, but, you know, going back to the, uh, the same thing, I mean, the electoral system is hard to change uh, because the incumbents, you know, have a vested interest in keeping it, you know, there, right? So those people who are successful and who held power thanks to the existing system are going to be reluctant to see that changed. Uh, you need to have a you know, revolution-like <laughs> uprising on the society to really uh, to be listened to, I think. Yeah. Okay, uh, Professor Curtis, who is pressed for time, has generously said that he will uh, stay and answer more questions, so we can extend the session to, to 2.30. Uh, next question from Gephardt. Uh, Gephardt, user freelance from Germany. On the nuclear question and on 
opposition uh, possibilities. The communists have been the only consistent opponent to nuclear energy among the current parties, but uh, it doesn't help them to get more than maybe 10 seats or so. That doesn't change things. But there's one politician who originally made his uh, central role in uh, expressing opposition to nuclear energy, and that's now Tokan. But his own party uh, kind of didn't like it, and therefore they made him resign a few months later, uh, the chairmanship. Have you ever had a chance to talk to him recently, and do you give him a chance? Because he's the only believable, so to speak, opponent to nuclear energy who might have a chance to get a public support base of larger size than uh, the Communist Party, who's been doing well, but that's, that's not going to be uh, the alternative to the LDP rule. Koich, I think you've seen him recently, haven't you? Yes. Um, well, um, yeah, I was actually quite surprised to see that he seems to be really be still interested in, in a, some sort of comeback. And uh, my guess is that the fact that even Abe was able to come back <laughs> encourage a lot of people to think, why not me too? Uh, if he's deserving, I'm certainly deserving too, I think. And actually, that's one thing that uh, I'm less sure whether Abe is going to be stably in power um, compared to Jerry, maybe, because I think people like Asso would certainly be tempted also to make a comeback. Uh, you know, why not me too? And uh, Abe has health issues, so I think, you know, that could also, you know, make a comeback. <laughs> um, uh, even if he doesn't want to. Um, and uh, on Khan, I think he, he seems to have, you know, an interest in, um, in still being a player. And um, so he's not this, you know, half-retired um, uh, politician that you might sometimes see uh, still, in, you know, lingering around, lingering around in parliament. Um, but I think he also has a number of enemies. And on the nuclear power issue too, for example, the communist critics of Khan would point to the fact that he was the prime minister when the Japanese government started to promote export of reactors to uh, Southeast Asia. And so, you know, he's only for the cause, for opportunistic reasons, and for the more traditionalists, uh, you know, the, the communists, as you said, uh, uh, about the only people who have been very consistent on that issue. He's looked at with a great deal of suspicion. Uh, as somebody who's only trying to make use of the the, the popular cause. So, uh, not sure. I mean, he's got certain political talents, and of course he's got name recognition, but he also has a number of enemies, uh, a lot of, you know, and I think, as you know, uh, as you probably know too, I think the, the, uh, the overall assessment of his premiership, you know, seems to vary quite a bit between what's observed from overseas and what is understood in Japan. Uh, I think the, uh, you know, Khan's premiership and his handling of the nuclear crisis is rated more highly abroad than it is in Japan, uh, partially for political reasons. Anything to add, Gerald? <clears throat> well, he, he, you know, he really had, believes in, uh, in the importance of, of, not, of getting rid of nuclear power. I don't think he has a, he's going to regain any political influence that will enable him to play a, a, a significant role anymore. He barely survived the last lower house election. There's no, there's no real support for Khan. Okay. You got a question in, in the back there. Yes, we will come to people at the oh, back. I, I was I had Carl doing on my list. Thank you for doing that, Sari. Panoramic news. Uh, I'm asking about the. Uh, uh, black horse in Tokyo elections, the Communist Party. Uh, you said it, he might come back again in the next elections. So how do you expect this party will develop in the future? I mean, if he change his name to the name of the former Communist Party, do you think he will have better chance in the future in Japanese politics rather than just a cult-like party now? Thank you. I don't think it has much of a future. Uh, I mean, I think it, you know, it actually has a, you know, it's the only political party in Japan that uh, has been in existence since before the war. It was founded in the early 19, 1920s. Um, it has, in that sense, kind of deep roots in a, in a small portion of the population. Probably what I said before about the Komeito being, being leery about becoming broader based because they lose the enthusiasm of the of Sokogakai members 
that, um, that get out there to, to rally the vote. Similar thing could be said about the communists, probably. Um, uh, they very reluctant to give up. If this issue about should they change their name has been around for a long, a long, long time, but they're not going to do that. Uh, and so they're, you know, they're, a, they're actually in many cases a real voice of reason on lots of issues. Um, they make a lot of sense on, on a lot of issues, and I think a lot of people feel that way. But do you, you know, that's that's great. But do you want them to run the government? No, thank you. Is is that overwhelming view is not going to change? So Japan is not going to turn communist. <laughs> Ko Koichi, do you need, want to add anything? Or well, that's fine. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a question here, and then I'm looking at the back for a few hands. Okay, we'll come to the back next. Süddeutsche Zeitung, Germany. I remember you, Professor Curtis, uh, I think four years ago after the elections in 2009, you said the DPJ will be not stupid, so stupid as to uh, call uh, early elections which they did. I don't think the DPJ is uh, less stupid or more stupid than the LDP. So would you please speculate on the, under what circumstances we would not see a four-year term of the LDP? Uh, I mean, Abenomics might be crashing, the JGB might be collapsing, or there are plenty of big egos in the LDP that would like to get into uh, our best shoes. Well, I appreciate you asking me that question after I made such a really stupid <laughs> <laughs> prediction the last time about the DPJ not being so stupid. So I'm not quite sure who's stupid here, but it's making me feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, but I think it is amazing that, um, that Noda uh, did what he did and actually believed what he said he was doing it for, which is that he got an agreement from Abe on electoral system reform, and they, and they agreed on that, and so he dissolved the House. Wait a minute, this is politics. People will agree to a lot of things, especially if they think it can, you can result in an election that you're gonna win. But the idea that he would actually honor that agreement, well, come on, this is not in the real, in, in the real world when, um, when Noda said in, in, in the Diet interpre Interpolation the other day, it was rather embarrassing to hear, I don't know if the one to be blamed is the one who deceived or the one who was deceived. In other words, should you blame Abe for going back on the agreement or should you blame me for being so naive, naive as to believe that he would honor it? Well, it's quite clear. He deserves the blame. Um, that is Noda. Uh, for believing it, if that's why he dissolved. I think he basically he was just frustrated and said, the hell with it, we're going to lose anyway, might as well get this over with, it's too painful to stay in here any longer. <laughs> um, but as far as the LDP, I mean, the chances are pretty, look pretty good at the moment that this government will last for a few years. But there are two big, two big question marks. Number one is health, the Prime Minister's health. The healthiest person in the world would have a hard time keep, keeping going at the pace that he has set for himself. He's visited 13 countries already. People say that he's taken a total of three days off since he's become prime minister. He works Saturday and Sunday. He sees people late in the evening from early in the morning. He's going at, a, at, a, at, a, at an incredible uh, uh, pace. Uh, he's, uh, I, you know, you get a sense but from, from him that he's, he's really adrenaline-driven. Uh, how long can his health hold up? I've, you know, apparently he's, he's taking, there's a medicine that he's uh, taking which seems to keep this chronic uh, stomach condition under control. But, but I just get the sense that, um, uh, that he's, he's going at much too intense a pace to uh, su to sustain and 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 without running the risk of becoming ill. So that's a big a big question mark. The other big question mark, of course, well there are there there are two other big question marks. One is what happens to the Japanese economy. So I think the economy is going to be in fine shape through the rest of this year. As I said, it's going to have a very strong fourth quarter once they decide to go ahead with the consumption tax. But what happens? 
after next April? Or what happens at the end of the year when people see this? Not really not much in the third arrow and the market, this, the Nikkei starts to reflect that, that reality. So, you know, what happens after April with the economy um, can mean that this government will be in trouble a lot sooner than people, than people realize. He came in in December, so this December will be one year. 18 months, uh, you know, summer, next summer, may, things may look, may look very different. So that's the second big imponderable. And, and the third one is this history foreign policy issue. If he not only, if he says things more, I mean, if he does, says more things about the so-called history issue, that not only um, uh, uh, further uh, aggravate uh, the relations with South Korea, especially with South Korea uh, and with China as well, but also uh, lead to tension in relations with the United States, um, uh, then I think, I don't believe any prime minister can survive in Japan if the public concludes that he cannot manage the U.S. alliance. Um, and so I don't think, I'm not, I'm not predicting by any, in, any, in any sense that Abe will not effectively manage the relationship with the U.S. But, you know, Mr. Abe, I've always had the sense it has this internal struggle between his head, pragmatic realist, and his heart, this emotional, more right, um, uh, fellow who wants to somehow believes that that Japanese pride requires explaining away things that Japan did during the war, uh, and uh, that as long as his head's in control, his brain is in control, he does okay, and and he understands this. But you know, someone asks him about comfort women, and uh, you know, Kono Dama, and he said, and if he if he makes the mistake and says what he really thinks, he gets himself into big trouble. So I don't, I don't dismiss the possibility that this will continue to be a problem in, 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 for him and in his relations with, with, other, with the East Asian neighbor, with his neighbors, but also it, it's a very sensitive issue in the United States. Uh, these history issues, especially the comfort women issue, um, uh, generates a very strong negative image for Japan. So I, 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 I hope he gets it, I mean, he understands that, and he will keep his thoughts to himself. As Prime Minister, there's only two words he has to remember, in my view, when it comes to answering questions about history. No comment. No comment. Talk, save your comments for after you're out of office. Um, I don't know if we can get another question, but Koichi, tell us your thoughts on Abe and the history issue. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> I think we need an hour <laughs> uh, if I were to get to that. But um, you have uh, one minute. Five seconds. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's going to be tempting for him to say more than no comments, and that's really going to be the problem. Uh, as Jerry pointed out, I think you see the impatience of the U.S. government in recent uh, weeks. In fact, since Abe took uh, took office, uh, the, the the U.S. I think government has been, you know, sending rather obvious signals that you know, they, they are not going to condone uh, this rightward shift in the way it's been so far. And um, of course, they also know that you know, the, the definition of aggression or the, the questioning, the, uh, the truthfulness of the comfort woman's testimonies, uh, Abe started it. It's not Hashimoto who began the process, but Abe started it and Hashimoto followed, and more followed you know, in the form of Nishimura and others. So uh, Abe is held responsible for Abe government, uh, for, for, for that in, by the United States, and uh, this is something they'll have to, um, to remember. Uh, but it's going to be very tempting for Abe to speak his mind after a big victory that seems like an you know, endorsement of what he's, he stands for as a politician. Okay, thanks very much. I'm sorry we don't have time for any more questions. That takes us up exactly to our finishing point. Uh, but let me thank both our speakers. As always, that was a riveting session, and I think we've all learned a lot. As is our custom at the club, uh, we are extending honorary one-year memberships to both our speakers. If their reputation survive the uh, predictions they made, they're welcome back. In fact, they're welcome back anyway. <laughs> Thank you.
very much. Thanks. Please come back. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs>